There's a reason why we get off the paved roads in the first place. To break away from our daily routines. To spend time with our loved ones, our best friends, and enjoy the beauty of nature with them. So we embarked on a very memorable trip, camping and overlanding from Harrison Lake all the way to Pemberton, BC, through the Inchuk Trail. It's an approximately 500 kilometer drive from home and back. This drive took us to an epic camping spot along the Harrison Lake, as you can see, through some First Nations communities, through some breathtaking mountain views, ending at Lillooet Lake, and finally back down the gorgeous Sea to Sky Highway. So what are we waiting for? Come explore with us. This is our campsite. It's pretty sweet. Right on the little, little beach here. This is our kitchen setup. As you can see, it's very glampy. Hello. A barbecue setup. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to your kitchen. It is. All right. Let me check out a stove. You do. Table, I've got all these boxes full of useful stuff. Yeah. Got to have propane tank, a five pound propane tank with a hose. I'm really happy with our, with our little setup. And yeah, excited to, to use it. I'm actually getting kind of hungry. Maybe we should think about food now. Well, we've had the stove for a while. We've had the table for a while. We just got the propane tank. Yes, we did just get the propane tank. Yeah. Instead of carrying all like the individual little ones, uh, this is probably more space efficient and definitely more cost efficient. And look, we found an Easter tree. It's all decorated. How you doing, buddy? A little tired. Sawing hard? It's not as easy as the chainsaw. Where's your chainsaw? Oh, it's in the truck. I just wanted to test this out because it's new and uh, it, it, uh, it doesn't run out of batteries. Provides infinite batteries. So if you're motivated enough it'll do in a pinch nice barely an inconvenience well you look very manly there you go good girl good girl switch good girl yay henceforth you shall be known as the fire lord Ooh. Yeah, like, how's your fire? I think it's working. If we stare at it long enough, will it burn hotter? Yes. No, you ruined it. Oh, the whole thing now. Oh. I took a picture. Hello, YouTubes. I may have found a new breakfast beer. In our first episode, I talked about how the Fuggles and Warlock strawberry one is delicious, and I have some of those. But I have now discovered the Strathcona Beach Rattler, and it is also delicious and might be my new favorite beer. Or at least, you know, suitable for pre-noon drinks, which I never have. Who's a good boy? Ready? There it goes. Get it. Good boy, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. How's camping? Good. We were just talking again about how we have the best spot. 
We do. We're going to be store winners of the weekend. We are. We have the best spot. I swear to God, no matter where I sit, the smoke will smoke always way. follow me. Always. I'll go sit there, the smoke will come there. I'll go sit there, the smoke will come there. This isn't even the delicious side. Super artsy scene. Uh, but I mean, I got, yeah, well, I cut myself with it, so your axe is sharp enough? Kind of, it's sharp enough to cut my skin. Mm -hmm. I feel like I should sanitize it. Not, not your axe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should sanitize your, your axe at this point. Aww. You having a good time? Yeah. Yeah? A great time. I mean, Are you happy? Yeah. Look at this place, man. How can you how can you not be happy? Right, Dante? He's not gonna be happy. That's not a stick. That's a rock. I fooled you. I fooled you. Oh, this one got a stick on his own. Hey, good looking. What you cooking? I am cooking Betis Chidi's. Uh, linguine with chicken. So Parsley. spag ball? Spag ball. Spag. Ball. Spaghetti bolognese? No. Linguini, parsley, olive oil, lime. Lemon. Lemon, ginger, I mean garlic, chicken. It's delicious. It's like it's pasta. Huh? And it's like, no, it's pasta. Pasta? Pasta. 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 Thank you. Not pasta. Pasta? Pasta. Pasta. Olive oil. Lemon juice. It's also a lot of garlic. I don't know if you need that much. There's no such thing as too much garlic. Day one of camping along the lake was a great success. We were very lucky to not get rained on and we found the best camping spot we could possibly hope for over the long weekend. A great day came to a great end. The next morning, we had some surprises waiting for us. Easter surprises. Good morning. How are you? I bring you coffee. Thank you. Look, we've been visited by the Easter llama. Oh yeah, look at that! The last animal you expect to see while off-roading in British Columbia? A freaking llama! We've dubbed this llama the Easter Llama. Apparently, he likes to live and roam around the West Harrison area and belongs to a logging camp nearby. It wanders along the dirt road saying hi to all the visitors. This was a huge surprise for us nonetheless and was a major highlight of our road trip. There is a llama on the road. My dog's going crazy. This is amazing. I've never seen a llama run. Easter llama came. Oh, there's so much. Look at that. Whoa. Is there all just chocolate in there? Oh, they're totally 
There's little, the little chocolate eggs in there. We've been visited by the Easter Llama, guys. The Easter Llama. Things I'd never thought I'd see a day for 500. <laughs> Has Rocky ever met a llama? <laughs> Maybe he's going to the wreck site. <laughs> Well, see you next year, Easter Llama. We don't really celebrate Easter in the traditional sense or the religious sense, but it does provide us with an excellent opportunity to spend some time with family on a beach in Mexico. Now this is no Mexico, but hey, it's still a beach and it's still with family. It's day two and uh, it's raining a lot, but that's okay. We have fashioned ourselves a cool little shelter on top of the fire. If you can see it right there. It involved a little bit of ingenuity. Ingenuity. Okay, things escalated a little bit with our little shelter because now we've created a little footstool for ourselves. This is the light. And there's a little side table. Why don't you tell us about how you are underrepresented as a Bernese Mountain Dog X Lab mama? I feel like there's plenty of us around the world. I think that we're going pretty strong, judging by the Facebook groups that I'm in. There's, there's lots of us. What about the off roading community? Oh, yes, I feel very underrepresented as a woman in the off roading community. Why is that? Because I don't have my own truck. Why don't you get your own truck? Because I only make 70 cents on the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero, zero things to say about that. <laughs> shit, shit just got real. <laughs> Ansel's in the same boat because he doesn't have his own truck either. Oh, true. Allison okay. owns the truck. Okay, that was, that was a low blow, Allison. And he's Why, does that make you feel emasculated? And, and he's a minority. <laughs> You know that truck is mine. It's just registered in your name. You are underrepresented in the off-roading community as a brown guy who does not own a truck. <laughs> How many of those are there? Okay, but that truck is mine. It's just in your name. Why I did, paid why for is it. Why it in your name then? Because it was, I don't know. I think it was just convenient when we were registering it. Mm -hmm. But I paid for it. Oh, did you now? I did. Yes, mm -hmm. Allison makes zero dollars mm -hmm. and contributed zero dollars. Allison makes what, 70 cents on the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so if anything, maybe she owns like 70% of the truck. No. That's not how math works. That's, <laughs> see, that's not how math works. I'm joking. <laughs> if anything, she owns 30% of the truck. I feel underrepresented as no, a person who doesn't do math, math very well. <laughs> Jordan, can you do some math for us, please? Okay, yeah. yeah, so... <laughs> 70 no, plus 100 is 170 math. divided by 2. <laughs> he takes a drink so we can try to think about that for a little bit. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Good. What are you cooking? We're, um, we're frying up some chicken. Yeah. And we're doing some rice. I can't show it to you because it's boiling. Okay. And we're going to do some veggies. We've got some broccoli and maybe some green beans because not all of the people in our party like broccoli, which is a shame because broccoli is the best vegetable. I also like that I'm standing here at the exact right time that makes it seem like I helped cook any of this. <laughs> but it's been all Jordan and I just saw it. <laughs> Jordan, what'd you cook? What'd you cook? Um, so you made pancakes this morning. I did. Most of them were burnt. The only good batch that I had when I figured out how not to burn them, I made for Allison and then she didn't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> she just didn't feel good. It's not because your pancakes suck. But I was like, I finally got one set right. Okay, Allison. And he's like, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, um, no one who actually ate them knows that I did good on pancakes. I think the pancakes were delicious. Okay. Thank you. That is good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Chef Jordan in action. Mm -hmm. Supervisor Krista. This is a nice pan. It's going to be annoying. I approve. 
Is this one of your camping pans or is this a regular pan that you pick camping? No, this is a regular pan that became a camping pan later on. Damn. This and is then, too nice for me to designate to the camping pile. It's right really there. nice, yeah. This pot, though, was like a regular pot until the handle got burnt while camping. And now oh, it's so a there camping was a plastic pot. On it? There was. Oh. And now it's a camping pot. And it's a great camping pot. We have separate pans and we leave it in the shed. And then when we go camping, we don't have to pack as much because the shed pans just come. But then when we're out here, we're like, where's the thing that's where's not the garbage thing? And yeah. it's at home? Because yeah. we don't have this nonstick pan out here. Right. Which we probably should, but... But that's really good for camping. I know you have like a cast iron skillet for camping, which is fantastic. Yeah. But the problem I find with cast iron skillets Even is... that's broken. Yeah, like A, you, you're not just going to wash it. You're going to have to properly season it and take care of it. And secondly, like if you're going on a day trip, it's just going to stay hot. Yeah. And they're Forever. heavy. Like, and they're heavy. They're heavy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, guys, you know what would be so useful? A face shield. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Block out all the smoke. Damn. For those go out of style, I should buy one at the dollar store. <laughs> right? Just make it out of saran wrap. <laughs> saran wrap your mouth? I don't think that's very I just need a little window here to keep the smoke out of my eyes. Yeah. We spent the rest of the evening just hanging around, eating a delicious meal, and spending some quality time together without Wi-Fi or internet to distract us. Despite the rain, we found things to do and to look forward to. It was an early night. We had a big day ahead of us. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Happy camping. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Get it. We spent the morning packing and cleaning up the space. We like to leave the place like we found it, or better. Usually, we end up finding a bit of garbage from the previous visitors, so our vehicle tends to leave with a little bit more than we brought in. But you know what? It is what it is. So, our overlanding journey continued northwest. There's active logging camps along the road, and the driving conditions right after the camp are a bit rocky. But after the main logging camp on the north end of the lake, the road smooths out a lot. After all, there are multiple communities lined along the river that the road follows, and they need easy access to get to their homes and out into town as well. I'd previously heard about the kind of views to expect and even seen some photos and videos. But honestly, no picture or video can do this place justice and prepare you for seeing the views in real life. It's not just one spot or two. The road is a gold mine of tremendous towering mountains. Sometimes you drive right at the edge of the bare mountainside. So landslides and rock falls are something to be aware of. But there's something so satisfying about driving on a gravel road beside the bare rock of a cascading mountain range. Sometimes you drive through seemingly barren areas just to be surprised by a view of a lake surrounded by greenery as you crest the steep uphill. Simply amazing.
crossing over a bridge that said weight limit 62 tons. He's like, ah, oh, Christy, you're going to have to get out. <laughs> that's, a, that to me too. that's exactly what I said to her. <laughs> wow. As you approach the Lillooet Lake and continue to drive, you realize truly how large the lake is. There's the lower Lillooet Lake at first, closely connected to the upper Lillooet Lake, which is larger and closer to the highway. There's multiple day use and camping sites here, but there are also homes along the lake, some of which are for sale and very tempting. Though this area gets busy in the summer due to its close proximity to the highway, for me, it's always worth a visit to drive the extra little bit and find a secluded area for us. The beauty of this water and the surrounding mountains will never get old. We reach the end of our overlanding journey, finally touching down at Lillooet Lake to stretch our legs. This was an absolutely amazing trip and I can't wait to do it again someday. However, there's a lot more to explore in this beautiful province. So come explore with us next week, same time, same place. See you then. Find you again